Let's take a look at this. Look at that. That is art, that is cinematography, that is beauty, that is culinary. Well, it's James and this is Coolest. And here on the channel, we mainly focus on the coolest experience in life. And that revolves around travel and some of the byproducts of travel. Mainly eating, exploring, and the elixirs that come with it. Well, on my channel, I have a series called Slice of Life. And Slice of Life brings me to some of the best, and also it puts me on a quest for some of the coolest pizza spots on the planet. Well, I recently was in Chicago, and when I was in Chicago, I had to do deep dish, right? That's what you do. It is mandatory when you're in Chicago, you do deep dish. And I wasn't looking forward to it, okay? My previous experience with Gino's East, and I hate to throw Gino's East underneath the bus, all right? I, I went there four times. For me, that was always the hallmark of deep dish pizza was Gino's East. And I was turned off for many, many years. And I won't go into specifics because I, I, I can't fault Gino's because I had a lot of great memories there. Many people consider them one of the forefathers, if not the forefather of Chicago deep dish pizza. But it was soupy and it was runny and it was more like pasta and you had to eat it with a fork. Where am I going with this? I went to Giordano's for Slice of Life and it reinvigorated and reincarnated my fervor and love for deep dish pizza. In fact, it might have actually just started it, okay? I couldn't believe that a pizza so thick wasn't soupy, wasn't runny. It was able to be eaten with a fork or by your hand if you actually wanted to shovel up with your hand. And believe me, you had to shovel. So here we are today. Um, go check out my video of Giordano's, by the way, if you haven't. But the hype is real. So real, in fact, that I just ordered four of their individual pizzas uh, from their online store. Now, I'm not sure how this works. Um, I've never done this before. I'm going to unbox it right in front of you. I ordered four pizzas. They only have four to choose from. I ordered them yesterday, and it came overnight. And I chose spinach, cheese, pepperoni, and sausage. So there's four pizzas in here. They're $104 total. The shipping was free, and they arrived in one day. So I'm going to unbox these right now, and I'm going to eat them in order of my projected least favorite to most favorite. I have no idea what this is going to take. I have no idea if the at-home pizzas are the same size, if they require the same type of cooking temperatures. I have no idea what to expect. So without any further ado, let me unbox this thing, and let's get started with the spinach. Part one, Giordano spinach at home. time. Let's see what we have here. Looks like we have some Giordano's directions. For something like this, I think we're going to need it. All right, let's check out the top right here. Look at that very beautiful packaging. Looks like we have at least one individual cooler. I'm not sure if there's going to be four of them completely. It would not surprise me if there is. So I like the branding up top. I like the styrofoam. It keeps things extra chill. Okay, so let me reach up out of there and see what we have. Pull one of these out. Oh, look at that. There are two pieces per box. So here's one. Stuffed spinach pizza. This is one we're going to do today. And then here's the second one. The stuffed sausage. All right, let's get this other one out of here. Here we have the stuffed pepperoni. And last but not least, we have the stuffed cheese. Man, I kinda wanna do this one first. I really, really wanna do the, the cheese one first, but I don't want to experiment either. I love cheese pizza. Cheese pizza is usually love or hate. Most people are typically divided on it, right? Uh, some people think it's too basic, and then some people think that it is the bedrock of all pizza to be judged against all other pizzas. I'm in the middle. I see both arguments, but nonetheless, look at the size of this thing. 
This thing is absolutely thick. Let me see the weight on this. So each one of these is two pounds. Each one of these are two pounds. Let me show you what all four look like. And here are all four. It looks like each one comes with sauce. So I'm gonna read, I'm gonna need to read the directions on these and figure out how they are prepared. I'm not gonna do that right now. I don't wanna waste your time. All right, so here's the stuffed spinach. This is the pizza we, we shall do first. Then we're gonna move over to the stuffed pizza, okay? Then we're gonna move over to the stuffed sausage. And last but not least, we're gonna do the stuffed pepperoni. And I hope I hone my acumen by then because man, I'm looking forward to this. All right, there's one thing I wanna do before I read the directions and get started. I wanna quickly go over the nutritional info on each one of these. No, I'm not gonna be that boring. I'm not gonna go through line item by line item on macros and micros, but I do look at macros and micros. I know there's some other fitness-minded people, but there are also pizza fanatics, okay? We have to find a way to live with both. So the spinach was 390 calories per slice. Then the stuffed cheese was 400, so only incremental improvements, all right? Sausage was 410, so it went from 390, 400 to 410, and then the pepperoni is 420, over 3,200 calories per pizza. So I'm gonna read the directions. I'm gonna get started on this. All right, so I just started reading the directions and the directions are weirdly very interesting. So what it says here is that these, this package was shipped with five pounds of dry ice, yet little to none will be remaining when you receive it. And that's true with me. There's only just a little bit, there's only a few remnants remaining, certainly not five pounds. The pizzas should arrive frozen, it says, and they have. Unless you plan on baking your pizzas within a few hours, we suggest you place them directly in your freezer for storage. Their freshness in the freezer will last up to six months. For optimal cheese melt, place the pizza in a microwave and cook on high for six minutes. Interesting, I'm gonna microwave my pizza ahead of time. Okay, so, and then after you're done removing it from the microwave after six minutes, Spread the additional sauce in the pouch on the pizza, then place the pizza on the center of the oven rack for 35 to 40 minutes. So it's half the cook time of what it would be if you went there personally, because I know for me it was 80 minutes. So that's basically a rundown of directions, 325. You put it in the microwave ahead of time for extra cheese melt, center rack, 40 minutes. All right, so I'm all the way down here in the frame, and I just want to show you what this pizza looks like when I finally cut into it again. This is a stuffed spinach pizza. They have four options. They have spinach, they have sausage, they have cheese, they have pepperoni. We're starting with spinach. Let's cut this open. And again, what I was told to do is run this under hot water and melt the sauce while this is in the microwave for six minutes. Then I'm take this out of the microwave for six minutes, Hopefully this will be melted on time. This sauce goes on top of this and it goes in the oven for 40 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna get to work. All right, so I microwaved the pizza for five minutes. It said one less minute if your microwave oven has more than a thousand watts. I have 1250, I put it in here for five. The consistency is pretty good, soft here, it's still thick down here. That's probably one of the reasons why we don't have to cook this for 80 minutes. We only have to cook it for 40 is because we gave it a pre-nuke. All right, so while I was nuking the pizza, I soaked my sauce in a bowl of hot water. And as you can see, it's now of perfect consistency. That's what they recommended doing. So now I'm going to put the sauce on the pizza and hopefully by the time that happens, it'll be 325 and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Sauce, great. All I did was run it under hot water in a bowl for two minutes and then let it sit in the bowl for the other three minutes concurrent to while I was microwaving. So let's cut this. They said they wanted me to spread it on here. I'm just gonna pour it on. Okay. I'm gonna give it some coverage here with a fork. I'm just gonna move it around here a little bit. And you can see here is our makeshift pizzeria pie. All right, it's got a great start to it. Look at that. Watch this, I'm able to one-hand it, all right? I'm able to one-hand it because it's still frozen at its epicenter, okay? So I'm gonna one-hand it, and I'm gonna put it in there. Actually, I'm gonna spray. 
I'm just gonna spray that rack real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna one hand it, still frozen near its epicenter, so still able to be managed by hand quite easily. I'm gonna put it in the center rack. I just put a little bit of pan in there just to grease down this rack. This oven has been used less than a few times, literally less than five. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Put it right on center there. It looks like a thing of beauty. I'm gonna put it on for 35 minutes, but check in at 30, and that way I don't miss its optimal cooking temperature. And that's what it looks like. All right. I see you guys in 30 minutes. We are 30 minutes in. 30 minutes in, and I'm gonna let it marinate for another five minutes. I'm gonna let it cook for another five minutes. It says 35 to 40. These pizzas are so dense and they have so much mass. They're really tough to overcook. So it's at 35 to 40. I'm gonna go on the under threshold, take it out at 35, investigate, and see what it looks like. So five more minutes. You can see the steam piping off it. All right. Let's cut in this thing and see what it's like. All right, here we go. I've never actually cut into a deep dish pizza before. So doing these crusts, doing the outside, the walls are not easy. As you can see, the walls kind of flake off a little bit. It's a tad crunchier and a tad flakier than when it is in the restaurant. But since it was frozen and then reheated, I understand that. But you can see how it flakes off a little bit right here. Okay, and again, with walls so high, here's a pizza cutter for reference, okay? So, the wall is about as tall as a pizza cutter. Let's take a look at this. Look at that. That is art, that is cinematography, that is beauty, that is culinary. Look at that right there. So I'm sure this is piping hot. Mm. Let's see what these walls look like. So it looks like it is just stuffed spinach and cheese. All right, so it's spinach and cheese layered. It actually looks like a bit of lasagna. Okay, you can fork it up like that. And this is the first spinach pizza I've ever had. Let's eat the first slice together. Let's see what I think. So it's not as good as Giordano's, the live experience, okay? But it is a nice second place. As you can see, nicely layered. Love the flavors, lots of cheese. For $25 a pie, $100 for four pies and free delivery? I don't know why I'm buying frozen pizza. Rarely do I buy frozen pizza anyway. If I do, I'm in a whimsical mood, I just happen to have a hankering for a frozen pizza, or it's really, really, really late at night, or I'm in a weird area and they don't have a lot of pizza delivery, a la Wisconsin, okay? Man, I mean, I... the bottom is crunchier and flakier than how it was in the original restaurant. And again, I know it was frozen and then cooked in the oven 40 minutes, so a faster process than the 80 minutes at Giordano's, so I know you're not gonna get the amount of flexible, the amount of flexibility and dexterity that's normally in the crust. And there normally isn't a lot of flexibility, and the crust usually isn't that plastic. Okay, it's not your crispy, crunchy cracker crust, but it does have to be a little rigid to support this mass. I'm just noting that it's a bit more rigid than how it was in Giordano's. In case you're wondering what to expect in terms of the differences, same amount of ingredients, same heavy pie. I mean. When have you ever seen a frozen pizza do that? 
Never. 